Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from The Retro Lectures. And today I'm doing a pickup video followed by a short q and I posted on Twitter, asked me any question that you guys wanted and three of you guys came up with a question and I'm gonna answer it as best of my ability as possible. So please stay tuned to the end of that video for that. So normally when I go thrift shopping or shopping in general for video games or looking for video games, I never really find anything that's of interest to me or something that I need. There are some things that I can flip and I never really find anything of warrant that I wanna keep for myself. Usually it's stuff that I try to put on eBay. Most of the time I never find anything that I'll value to me personally. I went to a local thrift shop and I was surprised because it's a new thrift shop in town. I found Rayman 2, The Great Escape. I have it on the Dreamcast. I don't have it on the N64. This manual is mainly for the N64 version, but I have it for the Dreamcast. So when I do get a chance to play it again, I'm gonna use the manual and try to get through that as quickly as possible. Next up, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. And I know, why are you asking why am I getting a game that realistically is dead in the water and why I don't play it very much. It's just to add to my Call of Duty collection. I would like to get a complete Call of Duty collection from the PS2 all the way up to the PS4. I know there's a lot of games out there. I have maybe about six or seven or so, but eventually I would like to add more and more to the collection. I'm sticking to the PlayStation brand of it. I do have a Call of Duty on the Xbox One, which is annoying me, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna rebuy it. So Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, I played this when it first came out and I didn't like it at all. The single player, I actually didn't even give a chance. I played a little bit of it and I didn't like it too much. And when I played the multiplayer, I couldn't stand the multiplayer whatsoever compared to the other Call of Duties that I was playing in that genre, Black Ops being my favorite. And when I, this Modern Warfare, I don't know, I've, I think they just basically shoveled this out and quick, as quickly as possible, and I didn't enjoy it as much as many people would. And these next three games really caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting to see any of these at all because I never find NES games in the wild whatsoever. When I do, I have to pick them up, and if they're games that I could you know, put on my collection, a very small collection. I'll try to pick it up. I know Danny has a vast collection. If I ever want to borrow a game, I could go to his collection and borrow something from him. When I found these three games, I saw that one of them I was really interested in because I played the first part. The second one, I heard that it's pretty good for an RPG. And last, I have a game that's already the first part of that series. So I decided to add on to that. So first up, it's Willow, and I heard it's a really good RPG. I, I've never played it personally. I tested it all. I gave it a nice cleaning. I didn't know what I was doing, so maybe one day I'll actually play through it or as much as I can with it. Uh, it seemed pretty good. The graphics are pretty interesting. The music is fairly good too. Next up, TNC Surf Design, Water, Wood, and Rage. When I tested it out, it works fine. I cleaned it up and it works really, really good. I'll probably play this a little bit later, but again, it's one of those like mini game type games where you have just a high score to attain and that's basically it. I didn't get very far in it at all, I can tell you that much. And last but not least, this is why I picked up the whole collection of stuff. This is Adventure Island 2. I played the first one when I was a kid and it threw me back when I played the second one. I did enjoy playing this. I got to maybe the third or fourth level and then I died and I just never went back to it. Like I said, I just tested it out and see if I did enjoy it and lo and behold, I did. Now to this Q&A segment. So like I said, I put on Twitter, I'll put the link down below if you guys wanted to ask me anything, and I got three responses, which I'm actually very grateful for. Feel free to ask a question, I'll probably feature you guys in the next video. First off, from Buried on Mars, which Dreamcast game would you like to see an HD remaster? Sega Riley 2 is high on his list for him. I have the three games that I have here that I would like to see as an HD remaster. We did get them on the GameCube, but I would like to see a full-blown PS4, Xbox port to the systems, or even a Switch port, that'd be fantastic. First up is Evolution 1 and 2. I would like to see these ported over and you know maybe get more people and more eyes on this, this genre. I really did enjoy this on the Dreamcast when I played it. I only played the first one, and when I got as far as I did, I really did enjoy what I had. These were exclusive to the Dreamcast, which eventually got ported to the GameCube, and we saw Evolution Worlds, and they did feature both the games with a few more dungeons and a full game of Evolution 2 in it. It did receive mixed reviews back in the day, I think fives and sixes, but again, I didn't play it for the review back then because there wasn't much use of an internet for reviews unless you got it in a magazine. So when I picked this up in the stores, I picked it up and I had I was forced to like it. Otherwise, I would have to give it back to the store and try to get some money recouped back. But I didn't want to do that. I tried to keep it as long as I possibly could. So I did enjoy what I did play. And next up is a cult classic and that's Skies of Arcadia. 
We did get a port to the GameCube Skyzer Arcadia Legends. I would like to see this ported because there's a very big following. There's a lot of people, much like the Shenmue community, that wanted to see Shenmue be ported over to the current gen systems. A lot of people are up in arms and asking where is our Skies of Arcadia port because Grandia 1 and 2 are coming out and a lot of people are crying up in arms where is the Skies of Arcadia port to Switch, Xbox or even PlayStation 4. So hopefully these three games can actually get ported one day. Next up from Mrs. Q-Dog, if you could go to one gaming expo in the States, which one would it be? Oof, that's a, that's a tough question. There's two big ones I would love to go to, but I'm probably gonna stay to the smaller venues, you know, more of the retro community. But the first two that I would love to go to are E3. I would love to go do E3. I've been watching their coverage for years and it's, it's a big goal of mine to maybe eventually go there. Uh, and another one is San Diego Comic-Con, just because I'm big in, you know, the geek culture and much of what you guys are as well. And there's so many, new things that come out that I'm interested in. Comics, movies, trailers, so many different things that come out during San Diego Comic-Con that I would love to see. But as far as little community or, you know, the retro community type of cons, I would like to go to uh, Retropalooza. That would be one up in Texas. I know the Game Chasers host that. And last question is from Tyler, Gaming Guy 88 He asks, what game systems do I have the most nostalgia towards? And I'm gonna actually put that as a two-parter and it's two great consoles and Dreamcast is not one of them. <gasps> Unfortunately, the reason why I had a short run with the Dreamcast, I did enjoy it, don't get me wrong. I did really, really enjoy the Dreamcast, but I had a short run of the system. So I didn't really get to play all the games when they did come out. Not to say that I did play a lot of, you know, all the games on the these other two systems, but I did play a lot of games on these two systems and the games that I did have, I really did enjoy. And the first one is the NES. It was given to me in, I think, 1986 from my parents for a birthday. When I played it, I played the hell out of Mario Brothers. I played the hell out of Duck Hunt because that's all we really had for the longest period of time. I would go to, to Blockbuster a lot and rent a lot of games. Darkwing Duck was probably my favorite rental of all time and Tiny Toons Adventures, probably my two favorite rentals for the NES. I loved both of those games. I would just return it and just rent it again and return it and rent it again. Two great games right there. I wish you know I was smart enough to actually buy them or even keep them back then. And the next system would be Sega Genesis. And the reason for Sega Genesis, again, it was given to me as a Christmas present. I believe it was in 93, 92, 93 from my parents. And Sonic 2 was one of the games I got right off the bat. And then, you know, I eventually got Golden Axe and then X-Men, which is another one of my favorite beat-em-ups on the system, which is, again, gets a pretty big flack on but I did really enjoy that. Got to Magneto, that's as far as I got. I never beat it. There's a lot of games on the Genesis and the NES that I did have more of a nostalgic feel to. I do love those two consoles. They always hold a special place in my heart right there and right there, if you guys can see that, because I've spent more time with those consoles and played more games on those two consoles during a very, you know, impressionable time in my life. If you wanted to impress me or you wanted to keep me gaming, just keep putting out games. And because those two consoles were so good at putting out good quality titles, it was something that always intrigued me, kept me wanting to play more and more and more different games. Not to say the consoles nowadays don't want me to do that, but these two consoles made the game passion last a lot more. Atari was one of my first consoles ever. It introduced me to the, the whole genre, but these two were probably my hands down favorite. But please like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop it on my Twitter. I have Twitter, Instagram, on our Facebook page. Feel free to ask any question. We, I'm avid on those three platforms. If you guys ask a question, I'm pretty quick to respond. Please let me know what you guys think. Thanks guys.